Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now today I'm going to do some Venus flytrap flower stalk propagation. So instead of doing an introduction to the video, I just thought that I would do these propagation videos by just getting straight into them. So I am going to show you everything that you need to do in order to take Venus flytrap flower stalk propagation cuttings. So as you can see already, I've got everything set up. So you're going to need basically different pots, they don't have to be the size, these are 8cm square pots, I use square pots purely because they fit together on my trays better, um, and the mix is peat and perlite, so I have only used a little bit of perlite in this, I'd say it's about a 3-1 ratio, so for 3 pots uh, or scoops of peat, I did 1 scoop of perlite, and that makes um, the mixture that I've got here. So if you can look over here, these are the ones I did last year. Um, of the flower stock propagation. So these two clusters here are from upright cuttings and this bigger one here, if you can see that, um, is from one that I did laying down. So I'm going to show you basically exactly how I did it last year. Um, everybody has their own preferred methods. Some people like to do it in sphagnum moss, um, other people do it in peat, um, other people just um, do one big pot of everything standing up where I am doing mine a bit of both. As you can see, I've already taken some off my cut traps, purely because they were getting very close to opening. Um, so I did this two days ago. That's when I was originally going to plan to do the video, but I didn't have the time. Um, so I've taken that, and this is basically what I'm going to be showing you how to do. So I've done one laying down and two standing up. So if I start with my first one, I'm going to start with Darwin. So if I just move that over here. Um, also it's quite hard to see because of how tall the flower is, but you will need basically some scissors or some secateurs or whatever. I'm using scissors purely because these are the ones I use for outside. And then cut the stalk by the base. So even if um, you're just cutting your flower stalk off because it's draining the energy out of the plant, because when they flower they do drain the energy out of the plant, so the gro um, growth won't be as vigorous. Obviously if you've got a weaker plant, it's best to cut off. The flower stalks to prevent obviously your plant deteriorating further but this is a good way of getting clones from your plant um i'm also doing mine with cultivars um because you can't get the cultivars from seed so i don't need these to flower um i could have made my own crosses but they've still obviously been classed as typicals because you can't get true genetic obviously variations of them from seed so i'm doing flower stalk um propagation to get more clones of these plants so do it into several sections so i'll say about an inch per piece but i'm just going to cut it randomly and lay it onto the soil like that so if i just get the pieces so obviously because obviously i've got four pieces I just put them over here. Um, I need to obviously space it out, right? So again, use like something to prick it out or a dibber or something. I use paintbrushes purely because um, I have loads of paintbrushes and I don't have anything else to prick it out. You just make small little holes and put them in the soil. So you can keep the flower heads on. Um, I cut them off of the cup trap ones, but for this video, I am keeping them on. Um, so I'm going to put another one here. So the spacing doesn't have to be that wide um, because they will propagate out. As you can see from other ones, they've kind of filled the pot. They do need dividing, but I've left them in there. So you don't even have to plant them that deep. So I only make a little hole, which is a bit wide. That's why I have to push it in just to make sure they stand up. And then only a little bit in, like so. And then make sure the peat is around it. Obviously, make sure it's not too compact, but you don't want it too loose, loose either, otherwise they'll fall over. And then this for this next one, you can make a little divot in the peat, like so. Then lay it down and cover up the ends. Just make sure you push it down a little bit, but obviously don't cover it with the soil. And obviously make sure you don't break it as you push it down as well. But just resting it like that on the soil is fine. Um, so people often do the ones standing up purely because they say they get better rates of it. I got better rates of them laying down last year, but obviously again, it's personal preference. I'm just showing you 
obviously um, my method. So after that, you need obviously to write out your label as you go. So you don't want to get muddled up, especially if you've got loads of different, you know, cold files on the go. So just label and permanent marker. So this one was the Darwin. So just write the name of the plant and date it. Like that, and place it in like that. So obviously, again, then just it's the same process over and over again. So these propagation videos aren't that long. It doesn't take that long. These steps are really easy. So even if you want to just get in free typicals, um, then it's just a very simple step to follow. So once again, with this is a beastie boy. If I cut it down, these scissors aren't the sharpest, which I could have probably use something sharper. Um, We'll see, like that. Got the stalk again, and then again, same process. Cut it into sections. I could have probably got more out of this one because it was a bit longer, but I'm going to keep mine nice, quite long bits. I just want. So this is just good that you got variation. So with these as well, as long as they stay green, then that's fine. Um, Obviously, once they start turning brown, then they'll be no good, but with these, they're okay. As you can see, the cup traps, which I did two days ago, hasn't deteriorated. These are quite slow growing as well, though. Um, I'm not sure how long my other ones took. I remember it being a while, but as long as the stalks remain green, then you have nothing to worry about, because then you know it's going to work. So I have just realised that these do a little bit look like faces as I'm putting them in. Like that. But yeah, it's a very simple, very quick step. If I just write out another label. So as you can see, it is a very quick, simple step. And obviously you can do it whenever you want. When I got, um, I'm not doing the flanks in this video, but I will quickly show it to you now. Um, so this is the flanks, as you can see it's grown a lot, the lashes on this are really nice, so that's a flower stalk on it. When I got it last year it was very small and only had a tiny flower stalk, which was probably only about this thing, um, about this tall. But I took a cutting of it anyway and stuck it in the soil with it, and then I'll show you what I got out of that. So this was from flower stalk propagation last year, which is the baby flanks. So as you can see these are about a year old now, I did this about the same time last year. And you can already see it's got quite little long lashes on it. So this is what I got. I only got one out of that because it was very small cutting. But I'm surprised it works. I didn't expect it to work at all. But that is basically the rundown of Venus flytrap stalk propagation. As you can see, it's a very easy uh, propagation method. Best way of getting clones of your cultivars or clones of your typicals. Obviously, um, if you want to get more plants easy, it's easier than do it taking leaf... Um, pullings from your plants um, and obviously the other way would be to get from seed but in terms of cultivars this is the best way to get them so thank you so much for watching and have a nice day then you can see here on this one if I get to focus there um, that the white flowers are starting to emerge so you can see from the tips they've gone white so the flowers will be coming out any day soon um, so I'm letting these ones flower because I'm going to do a video later on about selecting them. So back here I've got three Venus flytrap cultivars. Um, so the flowers haven't obviously started coming out yet, they're still quite small but the stalks are quite tall so I could probably get three or four cuttings out of them. So I'm going to show you how to take these.